first say congratulations. You guys have just shown tremendous endurance because you've been sitting all day here. And I was thinking about all the speakers today and, and, and also your professors here, is that the one thing that unifies everybody here is that they're happy doing what they're doing, whether it's climbing K2 or creating a new restaurant that is vegan but not telling anybody about it. And then everything in between, it's, it's something that drives each one of these people, myself included, is that we're doing something that makes us happy. And so much in today's world, we live our lives because somebody else told us that's what's going to make us happy. And here in this forum, we have a chance to really learn to live a life that's yours. That's what's going to make you happy. So this is the title of the talk today, but more the title of my book and also the life. So I thought the best way to explain and give you some ideas about, because a lot of you have already come up and asked me, how did you get to where you did? It doesn't seem right. I thought maybe instead of just talking a straight on presentation about my work life, I'm going to share with you how I got to where I am. Not because you're going to do that, but just that, to show you that wherever you are, you can achieve whatever it is that you want because you've already got all you need inside of you right now. And what your teachers can do for you is to ask, teach you how to ask questions so that you can do the things that you want to do. So to start off is, you see the little kid with a big bow in her hair? That's me. <laughs> and I was born in Hong Kong, second child and a second daughter in a very traditional Chinese family. And if you know anything about Chinese families, that's what we in marketing would call very poor positioning. <laughs> I, my birth was followed by the birth of three younger brothers, which made it much worse. And my mother used to say to me quite frequently that I was a waste of a pregnancy. And you can imagine that was just the beginning. The physical and mental abuse continued. So by age seven, my family decided that maybe we better if I want to live someplace else. So they gave me to my aunt and uncle. Um, they lived in a place called Taipo in the country. And because they didn't have any children and they thought that maybe they would take me on because with all these, I have to hasten to say that it's not because they were poor. My family had money. It's just they didn't want another girl. So it's very specifically, you're not wanted because you're who you are. So this is not a good way to build self-esteem. This is not what most people <laughs> go through life saying, I'm so happy that I'm, I'm a waste of a pregnancy. Um, this is where I lived, and life was actually a little bit better. Nobody's beating me, and nobody's telling me I was worthless. Um, but I did learn some things, something that we now call child labor, and that's what I did from age seven. Um, we would assemble plastic flowers, and we also, um, embroidered these things. And my every day when I went to the factory to bring up my big canvas burlap bags of plastic flowers or these uh, fabric, I would pass by the river, which would change color depending on what fabrics they were dyeing, what colors of fabrics they were dyeing. So I was exposed to a lot of life quite quickly. And by age 11, my aunt and uncle had their firstborn child. It was a boy. So I got shipped back to live with my birth parents back in Kowloon, a very different area. And so, needless to say, this is not building my self-esteem still. And, but what was happening then is something happened because I was shipped back to a very nice school. As I said, my family was not poor. We went to a private school and everybody wore uniforms. You don't know how anybody's personal circumstances was, as they were scholarship children. And one of them, a girl called Rebecca, changed my life. She and her whole family of five, brother, sister, and her parents, lived in a room. And they shared a kitchen and a bathroom with two, fam two more families. This is the area they lived in. And this is like one of the places that she shared with two more families. 
this is not her place because they didn't have a little store in front. A lot of them had a store as part of the whole mix. They had two stools and the three of kids, which took turns, worked doing their homework, sitting on the stools on the bunk bed they all shared. By the end of the month, most of the time, they did not have enough food to eat. I was filled with outrage. I could not understand why a family with two working parents working full time could not afford to feed themselves. It was not right, it was not fair, and I was going to do something about it. I was still 11 years old, <laughs> but I had found my life mission, and this is really what changed my whole life. I now had a life purpose. I have a reason for being. This transformed everything I looked at and everything I did because now my reference point grew much past myself, much past surviving each day. I had a reason to live. So based on that, by age 11, I already had dealt with gender issues, child labor issues, working poor working conditions, lack of living wages, short term and, and short-sighted business thinking, ineffective and demotivating management, environmental degradation, and extreme income imbalance. So I was already understanding everything Sierra is talking about, and I was 11 years old. So I think I had a head start on you all. <laughs> from a first-hand perspective. And of course, cultural domination, because I also lived in Hong Kong, and being Chinese was actually a second-class citizen, because I went to a school where they taught us things like up and down the Swanee River and home, home, home in the range. Those were the songs we were singing. I have no idea where Swanee River was, and I, home, home in the range, there's no range in Hong Kong. <laughs> so. Being marginalized, being not enough, became almost like the thing to be, because that's all I knew. Now, what I learned was that hard work pays, right? I was making some money when I was doing the, those child labor work, not to question authority, because where I lived, what I did was not something under my control. I was just passed around like cabbage. And that's a limit to how far a person can rise in life. Now, if I still believe those things, would I be talking to you today? So somewhere in the way, knowing my life purpose transformed my life, and I took charge. I took charge of my life. Not what people outside told me, I took charge because I could see there's a way that life has to be different because it wasn't working the way it was. So I want to ask you, what are you holding on to now that's changing, keeping you from being all that you can be? You don't have to ask me now. Think about that and come back and say, how do you release that? How do you release that so you can be fully all that your potential is in you to be? So as I talk about my life mission was to know my north point in my personal compass, and that can be yours. Because it helps you navigate from wherever you are to wherever you need to go. To go. So what I needed to do as 11 years old was I needed to make my life purpose into something concrete. Now, this is before internet. I grew up a long time ago. There was no Google. There was none of this. So what was my reference point? My reference point was National Geographic. And what did I see there? I saw a lot of people in Africa with a lot of problems. So my focus became, I'm going to grow up and go help those people in Africa. I'm going to help them, teach them how to feed themselves and how to run the government. So that became my purpose, translated into some concrete action. So once you have a purpose, you still have to convert that into something actionable. And my actionable point was to do this. Nobody told me I couldn't do that because everybody told me I couldn't do nothing. So what's the difference between doing nothing and doing everything? <laughs> no difference. So just think of it that way. Just flip it around. 